Now then, Julian Assange is in the embassy of Ecuador. He dare not step outside the door, otherwise in, um, the English government would arrest him. And his fear is that he'll be sent to America immediately. And Donald Trump makes no um, secret, neither did Barack Obama before him, that they're waiting for him because he's a publisher who published war crimes and he's America's most wanted man. And the, the facts about Julian are this. No crime was committed, no charge was ever made, there was no allegation with any substance whatsoever, so the allegation was dropped as well. The allegation that wasn't an allegation was dropped. And so Britain's got no excuse whatsoever to keep him there. And um, so the press were not kind to Julian because there was so much innuendo that they constantly published that the, that the public got confused and, you know, just didn't, you know, just forgot he's a hero. The UN has said that um, he's, well, he's the most famous victim of human rights abuse in this country. And they, they say that he should um, be immediately freed with compensation because he's a political prisoner. Um, He's, a, he's there for, I'm not sure whether they said he's a political prisoner, but he's, he's, the reason he's being kept there is because of he's politically dangerous to what the establishment want to be getting on with. Um, right, so that's what, what I want to say, and it's particularly important because if you would be, care about Julian, talk to each other and think, yeah, this is terrible, you know, then, then it would create a buzz. And what I want to say, if you were talking about climate change or all, or let's say the plastic bottle, whatever you were talking about, it is democracy and it would work. And if, um, for example, if Julian, um, if, if, if it would be a vote winner to say, get him out immediately, and you made that buzz very, very clear, then Jeremy Corbyn would be up immediately in opposition to that, saying, let this man out. There's no reason to let him in there. And, and so it's an example of, of the fact that if we want democracy, if we want to get out of the death we face, then please, please engage with the world. And I'm talking here about culture because Lots of people are getting on with what I'm trying to do, and I'm still getting on with it, but I took a bit of time out to talk about culture. And so, let's get going. <laughs> um, now. <laughs> I want to say first that my aim is to give you a perspective, because with that perspective, Every book you read, but not only the books you read, the paintings you look at, everything you do in your own experience will have more relevance with this big cover I'm giving you of a perspective. And only I could give you that perspective. There's nobody else in the world could give it to you. And I can give it to you because it comes from the books I've been reading. And I've been reading these books all my life, I've been reading all my life. And so the two really great books that I've based this perspective on, one is the book of anthropology um, by a man, Lord Raglan. It's out of print, it was, printed, it was published in the 50s, and I must have read it sometime in the 70s, and 1970s. And the other one is the book I've just started reading and it is just, well, it's this man, David Hinton, I call him a blazing scholar 